నమస్తే చిల్డ్రన్ దిస్ ఇస్ మౌస్మి సైన్స్ టీచర్ మంగళ విద్యా మందిర సో వీఆర్ స్టార్టింగ్ చాప్టర్ త్రీ ఫైబర్ టు ఫ్యాబ్రిక్ సో ఇన్ దిస్ లెసన్ ఆల్రెడీ వీ హ్యావ్ డిస్కస్డ్ ఇంట్రొడక్షన్ దెన్ టైప్స్ ఆఫ్ ఫైబర్ ఫ్రమ్ హియర్ వీ యూస్ టు గేట్ ఫైబర్స్ దెన్ wool how we get wool from different animals that already we have discussed so today i'm going to explain about silk that means how we are getting silk from different from silk worm so how it will be cultivated and produce the silk fabric sericulture so what is sericulture sericulture is nothing but silk farming so how we will get the <coughs> silk from silk bomb that is that process is known as sericulture so sericulture or silk farming is the cultivation of silk bomb to produce silk so okay, we have to cultivate the silk bomb and we will get then how we will get silk this is known as sericulture according to the international sericulture commission china is the largest producer and supplier of silk in the world at first first silk was produced only in china and they was very clever they come to know that this type of materials or this type of fabric is very demand in the all over world that's why long long before ago china only cultivated the this silk worm and they produce silk and they never said other countries in the world how they used to produce silk and if the people from outside the china they try to come to know how they are doing sometimes they used to uh, fight uh, or they used to kill them so they don't want that other countries should come to know to the cultivation of silk because it is very costly material or costly fabric that's why they want to earn more money but after long long time after slowly slowly uh, some people used to tell as a story uh, people from some other country they took the silk uh, that silk worm egg like moth's egg uh, and they keep some um, with some uh, walking sticks and they bring to their country so like that way it spread to all over world so uh, some in that some might be that um, stories or some other purpose okay now it is that india is the second largest producer of silk in the silk production okay so in the india maximum uh, uh, states are produce silk you might observe in this picture that there are different color it showing so this color is nothing but different types of silk so if you observe here this green color is showing the mulberry silk that there are different types of silk i will discuss it afterwards in that this green color places that means they are growing mulberry silk this uh, little bit orange is color or dark yellow it is like these places like bihar uh, up some part of madhya pradesh uh, telangana like that they used to produce tasar silk okay then this small small blue places they used to produce eri silk then this assam belt if you observe this yellow color they produce the moga silk okay then another one you can see the pink color very small region you can observe they used to produce the oak tasar silk okay so these different types of silk we are getting in different places according to this they have the silk sarees name also 
you might observe that tassar silk uh, moga silk then malberry silk according to the name of the production of the silk they are giving the silk co fabric name also okay so <coughs> karnataka is the highest producer of silk in the india okay then karnataka andhra pradesh tamil nadu west bengal jammu and kashmir assam manipur kerala uttar pradesh madhya pradesh maharashtra mizoram so north east side if you observe maximum state they produce the silk other than arunachal pradesh maximum north east state they used to produce <coughs> and this eastern and south part of india also produce silk some part of north like jammu kashmir and so um, they produce silk okay now how we will get the silk so first we have to rearing of silk worm that means we have to grow the silk worm okay that means we have to know the life cycle of silk worm how silk worm are growing uh, from the moth egg so this process is known as rearing of silk worm then process of silk processing of silk is nothing but that we will get the raw silk from there how we will prepare the fabric okay so when if you observe this one so this is the life cycle of silk worm so moth moth will this is moth moth will lay the egg so many eggs together this egg will eat uh, this egg will be uh, uh, hatched and it will make larva this larva eat lots of leaves of mulberry plant and then after stop eating they will produce this cocoon okay so this cocoon is nothing but the cover of silk thread so how the silk thread will produce like this way this is the life cycle of so rearing that means we have to grow this silk uh, mouth like this how they will lay then larva larva how it will eat we have to give them the proper food like mulberry leaves then they will produce cocoon so after producing cocoon when cocoon will be in a mature place that time we have to start processing of silk so we will collect this we will make them uh, uh, from there we will collect and we will boil them then we will collect the silk thread from there we will prepare silk fabric from fabric silk clothes like sarees a shirt then dhotis like that silk materials dress materials this all we will produce so this is the pro two ways we are going to get the silk now rearing of silk worm so female moth will lay lots of egg together like hundreds of egg at a time when this egg will hatch the silk worm will come out from the egg and then the silk worm start eating mulberry leaves okay so then they will eat this they will eat this mulberry leaves near about 20 to 30 days 25 to 30 days they will only eat the leaves so much of leaves they will eat after they, they stop eating and they to ready to spin the cocoon okay so like that they start so how they are making cocoon from this um, larva that one saliva will come out with that saliva they will make that uh, around them and they will make they will keep themselves inside this cocoon and that trap and this saliva will with the um, help of this air and heat it will become silk okay so the silk worm get a very fine filament made up of in protein so that is come out from their a uh, gland okay this uh, then uh, it will when it will be exposed it will come silk fiber and this then this silk 
then they will make like this cocoon okay so this is nothing but rearing of silk worm now processing of cocoon to obtain the silk fiber so after collection of these cocoons they have to be uh, placed in hot water okay then the long fiber are obtained by unwinding the threads from the cocoon so so like that way they will first they will put this all cocoons in hot water then they will collect start collecting the thread from the cocoons okay this process is called reeling if we kill near about 6600 silk worm we will get at least 1 kg of silk fiber so it is very sad for us that we are killing one insect and we are getting this kind of fabric then silk worm rearing are four types so what kind of uh, silk we are getting this actually this is depends on the place weather and types of moth what kind of moth they are preparing it depends on that there are total five types of that is mulberry silk airy silk moga silk kosa silk and dasar silk dasar and <coughs> moga maximum you can see north side or northeast side and mulberry silk we will get more so in karnataka what we are getting the large amount of silk karnataka andhra pradesh kerala tamil nadu that we are getting the mulberry silk and this is named after the mulberry plant leaves they are eating now processing of <coughs> silk so this processing of silk we have six steps one is harvesting of cocoon then boiling or kept in sun then thread ex extraction or really then dyeing that means different color they will do then spinning then waving like that way silk fabric from cocoon to <coughs> that means collection of cocoon to how we will get the fabric of silk fiber and mm, sorry mm, that is this is six steps we have to follow first cocoon we will collect then fiber okay so first cocoon so cocoon collection is known as reeling from cocoon connection to that means after heating and all we will get that is called reeling this fiber will be make yarn that is called spinning then this yarn will make fabric this process is known as waving okay so this is the main uh, three uh, um, process we are going to follow a single continuous thread of raw silk from 300 to 600 meters can be drawn from a single cocoon so from a single cocoon and a single thread it will not be join anywhere that will be near about 300 to 600 meter from one cocoon we can get it so you can understand long and the fiber are very fine and uh, loose starts and that is near about 10 micrometer in diameter so their diameter they are very thin and soft quality okay. this is known as this picture is showing the how in during a uh, second century we see until 14th century AD how uh, the silk uh, trading was uh, going around these all countries in the ASEAN countries like China India Persian then Ar Arabia uh, Greece Italy so how the people were doing the business of silk uh, fabric from this uh, one place to another place so these roots of heavy silk trading uh, on that during that time so this uh, that's why this uh, place this map is showing the silk route so silk route of during that time so um, you can understand 
and already i discussed that china was the great and first largest manufacturer or product producer of the silk so slowly slowly other countries also they started uh, trading so like that way the joint countries uh, they also started produce and they started doing the business among them so that's why this is known as the silk road so with this this lesson has finished i will send you the uh, notes i hope you all have understood then uh, another one thing i want to in, uh, inform you people that all of you have not done the uh, activity so i can't say anything now as i gave you the time and i explained also so i want to say that your this activity if you don't uh, did not do it will be effect on your marks okay so i hope you have understand this lesson any doubt you can ask or feel free to ask in whatsapp group always we are there thank you children thank you